somehow part of the package of being a living, thinking being is that you get a universe inside of you. You know, you get a galaxy-sized object inside you that you can access. And there, there are the mountains, the rivers, the jungles, the dynastic families, the ruins, the planets, the works of art, the poetry, the sciences, the magics of millions upon millions upon millions of worlds. And this is apparently who we each are. We're a little bit of eternity sticking into three-dimensional space and for some reason occupying time in a monkey body. But when you turn your eyes then inward, you discover the birthright, the, the existential facts out of which this particular existence emerged. In the past hundred years, as these super technologies have been developed in the West, the smashing of atoms, the invention of, of radio, television, computers, immunology, so forth and so on, data has been arriving about the practices of aboriginal cultures all over the planet. That they dissolve ordinary realities, ordinary cultural values, through an interaction, a symbiosis, a relationship to local plants that perturb brain chemistry. And in this domain of perturbed brain chemistry, the cultural operating system is wiped clean. And something older, even for these people, something older, more vitalistic, more in touch with the animal soul, replaces it, replaces the cultural operating system. Something not determined by history and geography, but something writ in the language of the flesh itself. This is who you are. This is true nakedness. You are not naked when you take off your clothes. You still wear your religious assumptions, your prejudices, your fears, your illusions, your delusions. When you shed the cultural operating system, then essentially you stand naked before the inspection of your own psyche. Desmond Morris called it the naked ape. And it's from that position, a position outside the cultural operating system, that we can begin to ask real questions about what does it mean to be human? What kind of circumstance are we caught in? And what kind of structures, if any, can we put in place to assuage the pain and accentuate the glory and the wonder that lurks waiting for us in this very narrow slice of time between the birth canal and the yawning grave.